Hi, Adam here with FC Piero. Welcome to the Volvo SI6 Engine and Maintenance Diagnostics Guide. I'm going to go into detail talking about Volvo's transverse inline six engine that went into later XC90 models as well as all P3 chassis vehicles. Now this engine doesn't share anything with the old white block six cylinders and is no way related so I just wanted to get that out of the way. First I'm going to describe a little bit about the layout of this engine since it is a bit non-standard and then I'll go into the maintenance and the diagnostics phase. Volvo's short inline six or SI6 engine was designed in partnership with Ford to be mounted transversely or sideways in a normal mid-size engine bay. Obviously, this introduced some space concerns, but nothing that Volvo's engineering department couldn't figure out. Now, if you've ever done a timing belt on a five-cylinder Volvo, you're well aware of how tight that space is. Since they were planning on adding yet another cylinder, engine designers at Volvo had to get a little creative. Instead of the conventional layout, Volvo took a note out of Saab's dusty handbook and flipped the engine backwards. This allowed them to butt the engine right up against the side of the engine bay and move the ancillaries over the transmission side. Helping the maintenance situation, Volvo decided to ditch a timing belt in favor of a timing chain. And this is where things start to get a little bit weird. Since the timing side of the engine now has a transmission stuck to the end, a solution had to be devised to connect the crankshaft to the timing system and also drive the serpentine belt without a crank pulley. What they came up with is called a reed, or rear end accessory drive. It's one of the things that makes this engine particularly unique. The reed is a gear-driven shaft mechanism that bolts onto the side of the engine block and interfaces with a thin gear on the crankshaft. The timing chain then connects to the reed shaft, which continues through and also acts as a serpentine belt drive. They tucked the alternator on the other side of the accessory drive and everything is able to spin in time. Because of the lack of accessory space on the side of the engine, some other interesting solutions were implemented. The water pump, which is driven by the serpentine belt, shares a pulley with the power steering pump, which is very peculiar. Eventually, electro-hydraulic power steering pump replaced the belt-driven one, and the water pump design got an update along with its own pulley in later P3 chassis cars. The XC90 would actually always retain the shared pump pulley in the 3.2 models. The AC compressor was mounted backwards over the transmission so it could access the serpentine belt, albeit somewhat remotely. As you can tell, there are a lot of brackets involved. All of this effort paid off. The end result was a transverse mounted engine that could deliver the smooth, reliable power of a six cylinder, and it came in one millimeter shorter than the outgoing white block five cylinder. With this architecture, Volvo got two fundamental power plants, a 3.2 liter naturally aspirated engine to deliver smooth refinement, and a 3.0 liter turbo to deliver sizable power to the upper T6 trim levels. Both have standard port injection and coil on plug Bosch ignition system. Now you may think that with all that this engine has going on, it must be a maintenance nightmare. Fortunately, that isn't the case. Both the 3.0T and the 3.2 have proven themselves to be fairly reliable, but of course no engine is perfect and there are a few things to look out for. Yes, the accessory drive is a little peculiar and it does hinge a lot of the engine's health on one mechanism, but luckily for the most part, Volvo and Ford did a great job designing the unit and failures are very rare with the drive itself. However, on the outside of the reed, there is an overrunning pulley and that is a problem area as they usually are on most engines. You have to consider that this is handling the water pump, the power steering pump, and the AC compressor, which is asking a lot. So if you hear a rattling and you see the belt getting jolted or vibrating, I highly recommend diving into the belt system and inspecting this pulley and the tensioner for smooth action. Just remember, a special tool is required to replace overrunning pulleys, which we have available on the website. The reed drive, like any other engine part, isn't completely immune to failures. On high mile engines, potentially that have spent some time with a bad drive pulley, it is possible for the main bearing in the reed to go bad. This will cause a whining or a whirring noise coming from the assembly in the side of the engine. You'll be able to pinpoint noises like this by putting your ear up to a long screwdriver and uh, placing it around the engine while it runs. Obviously, an automotive stethoscope works better, but I like to give options. The drive itself is complicated to replace and requires special tools, so I wouldn't really consider that a DIY job unless you're just bolting on a used one. The alternator lives underneath the intake manifold on the other side of the reed drive and is driven by a rubber coupling pulley. While that coupling doesn't actually go bad, the pulley bolt on the reed side can come loose. Obviously when that happens, the reed can't interface with the alternator and you get all the common symptoms of an alternator failure. If you think you need an alternator, definitely inspect that bolt and that pulley on the reed side of the engine first and make sure you have everything uh, nice and tight. Uh, if it's loose, all you have to do is put a little bit of Loctite on and put it on to torque spec. Just remember on the alternator side, there is another overrunning pulley that should also be considered when taking a look at that. 
The SI6 is not immune to cooling system problems when they get on in years or miles. If you're doing any work that requires removing of coolant pipes or hoses, uh, you might want to consider replacing them while you're in there. There are a few hoses that have plastic connections, and uh, these connections have O-rings inside of them. We have had customers complain that they were having trouble getting a seal on those old O-rings, so it is nice to just have these around when you're putting stuff back together, just to make sure you don't have any leaks. Obviously, having new parts on hand can save you a lot of time. The water pump, especially on the early engines where the pulley is shared with the power steering, is a part to look out for. It's located in the center top of the engine bay and when it fails, it will leak coolant. Because of how buried it is, if you need to change it, I would give yourself an entire day for the regular DIYer, especially for cars with the shared pulley. Both SI6 engines have a few common oil leak areas. The seals on the redrive are common spots for oil leaks, so if you're in there, it's definitely worth taking a look. If you need to replace the reed lip seal on the outside of the engine, you will need a special tool just to reinstall that. That comes from Genuine Volvo, just a heads up. Moving on, the vacuum pump on the 3.2 engines is notorious for having the oil seal go bad. Obviously that causes a pretty decent sized oil leak down the side of the engine. Fortunately, Volvo recognized the problem and offers the vacuum pump seal kit uh, just by itself so you don't have to replace the entire unit. On the topic of oil leaks, the cam cover is somewhat common to leak on higher mile engines. There is no gasket in there, so a very modest uh, reapplication of an anaerobic sealant will do the trick for that. Like any internal combustion engine, there is of course a possibility for misfires. If you have a check engine light and a misfire code on a specific cylinder, you can swap those ignition coils and see if the problem travels to the other cylinder. If it does, replace the coil. It is popular to replace all the coils at once because if one coil goes bad, it's fairly common for the next one to go bad and you don't want to get stranded. If that doesn't fix the problem and the misfire stays on that cylinder, then it's time to pull the spark plugs out, see if you have any potential problems with fueling. Then you can sort of do the same procedure by uh, removing one of the fuel injectors and moving that to another cylinder and swapping them and then seeing if the problem follows that. If it does, obviously, then fuel injector is your problem, replace the fuel injector. If you have misfires across all cylinders, there's a good possibility that you have an air leak somewhere in the intake hoses, especially if you have a T6. While the SI6 engine does have a vastly improved PCV system compared to the older Volvos, there is still one problem area. The PCV valve diaphragm can sometimes tear, which will result in a hissing noise at idle. Luckily, the PCV breather box is located right on top of the engine and is easy enough to change. If you've done a PCV job on an old five cylinder, you can let out a sigh of relief because it actually is far, far, far easier. The last issue I wanted to talk today about is oil consumption and piston rings. There were a number of engines that came from the factory with newly designed piston rings, uh, presumably for efficiency and reduced friction. Unfortunately, the design was somewhat of a flop and the engines burned oil. This affected engines mostly built before 2012, and at this point, most of the engines that have had that problem have been repaired with new pistons. However, it is something to keep an eye out for. All right, so with the common issues out of the way, let's take a look at the maintenance schedules for the 3.0T and the 3.2 liter non-turbo engines. I recommend between 5,000 and 7,000 mile oil changes with quality synthetic oil, and obviously use a good filter too. The engine air filter should be changed every 35,000 miles. The spark plugs should be swapped every 70 to 75,000 miles. The serpentine belt and tensioner should be good for 150,000 miles. However, I always recommend keeping an eye on those items during other regular maintenance, especially in relation to the pulleys. Volvo also recommends changing the alternator pulley uh, rubber coupler at 150,000 miles, although I have never actually seen one go bad or look bad. Volvo recommends checking the coolant and replacing if a coolant test returns a bad result, but to make it easier, I recommend just draining and refilling the coolant about every 50,000 miles if you haven't had any cooling system work done. So I hope you enjoyed our video on the SI6 3.2 non-turbo and the 3.0 T6 engine. Because of the design and layout, it might be intimidating to buy a Volvo with one in it, but you can be confident that both of these engines have developed a great reputation for being reliable. If you found this video helpful, let us know by leaving a like. If you have any questions or comments about the SI6 engine or its applications, drop it in the comments section below. And as always, subscribe for more Volvo content in the works. Thank you for watching and catch you next time.